Composition of functions is probably an idea you're already familiar with. The big concept is the output from one function becomes the input of another. For example, if I put them together in this order, I'm taking the f function, not of x, but of g of x. So g of x, which represents the output from the g function, becomes the input for f. And rather than have an x here, which is the ordinary spot for my f function for the input, I could substitute g of x. And then if you were going to expand that the rest of the way, g of x is just the same as 2x. So that would be 2x plus 3. So the only algebraic thing that might be new for you here is a different way of writing this down, a different way of notating it. So rather than saying f of g of x, you can write it this way. f, and then a little tiny circle representing of, and then g, and you put those in parentheses to indicate that you're composing the functions, and then f of g of x. So what this notation on the right-hand side here represents is the exact same thing as saying f of g of x. It's a way of uh, naming that function that you get when you put the output of one as the input of the other. As a test for yourself, why don't you decide what function you would get if you did it in the other order and wrote down g of f of x. So if I take the g function of the f function, that's like substituting in the entire f function as the input for g. And if I, if I replace the name f of x with the actual expression that defines f of x, that gives us two times the quantity x plus three. And don't forget to put the parentheses because this is not the same as two x first and then adding three after. One of your big ideas this year in math is that a concept can appear in many different ways. So let's do a practice problem. Um, this problem looks quite different. There's no equation. Uh, I just gave you a graph that illustrates what y equals f of x is. And instead of composing two different functions, f of g or g of x, I'm asking you, what is f of f of f of one? So I'm composing a function with itself three times instead of two times. So there's a lot here that's different, but the concept is the same. The overall concept is, can you use the idea that the output of a function becomes the input of another to answer this question of what should f of f of f of one be? So give it a try. The answer is zero. Don't feel bad if you didn't get it. Let's see how we got it, and then you can try one more. Um, so I like to use diagrams to help me understand the process that's described by math sometimes. So here's the diagram that's in my head. So I could rewrite this in a more familiar notation. Uh, I'm interested in the f function of the f function of the f function of the input one. And you can represent the process that that describes this way. So I've got a little machine here that represents the f function and I'm going to send one in as the input. And we can use the graph to figure out what is the output from f of x when the input is one. So here's an input of one, I see the output is negative two. All right, so that was what's f of one. Now what if that becomes the input again to the f function? So I'll go to negative two as my input and the output I see is positive two. Okay, so now I know what f of f of one is so if f of f of one is two, let's make that the input again to the last application of the f function. So when the input is two, I see that the output, the y value here is zero. So if I put all those together and I ignore all of these intermediate steps and I just say, what's the output, the overall output when the input was one, I see that one maps to zero. And that's what you're getting as the function here. When you have an input of one, the output is zero. Why don't you try one more? Try and do it for yourself and tell me what is f of f of f of negative three. The answer that you should get is negative one half. And if you didn't, no worries. Uh, just please be sure to mention this in your reflection today and we'll talk about it in a different way next time.